Hi everyone, good evening. This is going to be the notes that the professor gave over vitamins for microbiology. Okay, so vitamin, it's going to be known as the organic compound that cannot be synthesized through normal metabolism. However, you do need it in small quantities for your daily processes of the body and for life function. So it's essential, but we can't be making the vitamins ourselves. This term vitamin was coined in 1911 by chemist Casimir Funk, and he called it a vitamin amine. He called it a vital amine. However, the E was dropped because the vitamins themselves weren't amines. If you have a deficiency in Vitamins, you could have certain diseases, so vitamin C, scurvy, think about all the pirates and all the sailors that they had, a lot of citrus fruits in that regard. B12 will lead to pernicious amnesia, anemia, sorry about that, the pernicious anemia, it's when you have a deficiency in B12. Vitamin D, you could have a deficiency in it, and that's going to be leading to rickets disease. Okay, so let's talk about vitamins made by microbes. The first one that the professor wanted us to look at was riboflavin. This is vitamin uh, B12. The deficiency of it, it's very rare in the U.S. However, you could get these symptoms. Sore throat, red swelling of mouth, cracks and sores. This is known as uh, chelosis. And then you also have moist, scaly skin on the tongue and inflammation. How are we going to make riboflavin? This is going to be uh, using this organism, Ashpia gossipi. This is a fungi. And you need an inoculum of like 0.75 to 2%, but we don't really need to know that for this um, test, according to the professor, so you kind of just skipped over that. Just know Ashbia gossipi is the fungus that's used for riboflavin, also known as vitamin B12. We're going to be using corn steep liquor. This is a common um, carbon source. This is a waste product. Again, we've seen it before. Peptone, as well as distillers, solubles, as well as yeast extract will be our nitrogen sources. So we have corn steep and then peptone yeast extract. Then we also add this soybean oil, which is kind of unique here. This is a seven-day fermentation at 28 degrees Celsius, a little bit on the cold end um, because we are dealing with a fungus. You're going to be using um, inositol to increase the formation rate as well as glucose. So it's a combination of inositol and glucose to increase the formation rate. How are we going to recover it? So um, it's bound to the mycelium of the Ashbia gossipi as well as um, floating around in the solution. So we're going to just use 120 degrees Celsius for one hour to discard the fungi. And then you could just further purify the riboflavin. Let's look at vitamin B12 next. History in 1926. Uh, it showed that liver extract cured the pernicious anemia. Remember, this is the vitamin B12 deficiency. So you have fatigue, shortness of breath, pale skin, numbness in hands and feet. And this is like also showing that you don't have any iron in your system. 1948, you have vitamin B12, which is also known as cyanocobalamin. And this is going to be isolated. This is when they isolated, 1948, from liver extracts. B12 is synthesized exclusively by microbes in nature. And... The kicker is it's made in by the uh, large intestines bacteria. However, we can't be absorbing it for some reason. We just can't absorb it. It's being made by the bacteria in our large intestine, but we need to ingest the B12, not absorb it from those bacteria. So in order to get a lot of B12, you could eat liver, fish, cheese, and milk, as well as beef. That's enough. 
the microorganism that makes um, vitamin B12. Again, we're talking about the large intestines, so some Pseudomonas uh, dentrificans will be used in the industrial sense, but then again, um, B12 is also made by the large intestine bacteria, but in an industrial sense, it's Pseudomonas denitrificans, and it's the most productive species. It's also gram-negative, as expected of Pseudomonas. Um, this is a 90-hour fermentation, so it's a little bit longer, 29 degrees Celsius. You need a lot of O2 because this Pseudomonas is aerobic. The base structure of the um, B12 and other cobalamins will be this tetrapyral ring. And at the center, the name um, cyanocobalamin, that suggests this cobalt, and there is a cobalt in the center of this tetrapyral ring in the structure. Biosynthesis of B12 runs parallel to chlorophyll and the synthesis of porphyrins. So these are similar uh, structures. They have different um, metal ions in the center, basically. So they are synthesized um, par in parallel to B12. The feed is going to be different than our B2, B2 or riboflavin you've used. Corn steep liquor, this one, you're going to be using sugar beet molasses. However, the nitrogen source is kind of the same. You have yeast extract. However, this part is different. You have diammonium hydrogen phosphate as another nitrogen source. You also have to add cobalt because you remember we talked about the structure of B12. You have the, the uh, tetrapyral ring and then you have a cobalt in the center. You also need 5,6-dimethyl benzimidazole and these are the supplements. You also add betaine. Uh, to increase the yield. However, if you have molasses, if you're using sugar beet molasses, this has this betaine in it already. B12, the uh, Cobalamins are going to be completely bound to the cell, unlike in, B in B2 where some of them are free-floating if we go back. Yeah, in riboflavin, some of them are free-flowing. Uh, cobalamins in vitamin B12 will be bound to the cell. So you need to heat treat them at 100 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Then you're going to convert it to the chemi chemically stable cyanocobalamin. This is the actual B12, by the way. If you want an 80% purity, you could just use it as a feed additive. However, the medically usable preparations would it need you to get to 95 to 98% instead of 80%. Let's talk about beta carotene now. This is going to come from plants or microbes. This is that orange red pigment. It's also known as provitamin A, and this is because it could get converted into vitamin A, actual vitamin A, in the intestinal mucosa. And then you're going to store this vitamin A in the liver as palmitate ester. Sources could be eating liver, salmon, green leafy vegetables, carrots, and cantaloupe. You could also use it as a food coloring agent and other derivatives such as um, lycopene, let me find, yeah, lycopene and our xanthophils do not have provitamin A activity. So when we're talking about this provitamin A activity, they can't become vitamin A in the intestinal mucosa. So the derivatives of lycopene and xanthophils, which are derivatives of our beta carotene, cannot go into vitamin A. However, you could use the derivatives to color the egg yolks as well as salmon to like enhance their appeal, their visual appeal.
deficiency in beta carotene could result in night blindness. You could also have changes in the skin and the synthesis of mucopolysaccharides. There's it's fat soluble and absorption of beta carotene is controlled through the intestine. High doses of supplements with beta carotene will actually result in orange skin. This is a real phenomena. The microorganism for beta carotene is Blakeshelia um, trispora. This is a fungus. It's a mixture of two forms. In fungi, we have positive and negative as the mating types. And this mixture of them will create this higher yield. Specifically, when we have our negative type, Blakeshelia trispora, this will make more beta carotene. However, you need a mixture of both positive and negative for the highest yield. Okay, it looks like the temperature is going to be 26 degrees. Time is 186, so let's compare it to the other ones quickly. Um, the time for the B12 was 90 hours at 29, and then the riboflavin was 7 days at 28. So this beta carotene is like the coldest because it's at 26 compared to the other ones we've discussed. It's also the longest. Oh, wait, no, it's not the longest. The um, B2 is longer because it was 7 days, and this one's only 186 hours. Sorry about that. Okay, so... Um, let's look at the, the ingredients for it. So cornstarch as the carbohydrate. So this is different. So not corn steep liquor, but this time it's cornstarch. You're also going to add soybean meal, um, cottonseed oil. Nitrogen is actually going to be your soybean uh, meal. You could also add distiller solubles. And these are going to be, again, present here like they were in B, B2's um, B2's fermentation also use the distiller solubles. These are going to be fermentation byproducts and yeast. We also have these activators present for beta carotene. You need trispiric acid. This is a pheromone responsible for sexual differentiation. And then you're also going to add um, isoniazid, this is going to promote beta carotene production. You also had kerosene. This is a very interesting point. You add kerosene to this to increase solubility of the hydrophobic substrates. And then you're going to also add um, antioxidant because of the low stability of beta carotene. This is going to protect the beta carotene. All right, recovery. Uh, mycelium can be uh, used directly as a feed additive, or you could separate out the mycelium. And you're going to dehydrate it with methanol and extract the beta carotene using methylene chloride. And then, of course, there's going to be extra purification steps. All right, that's all on vitamins. Please have a good one and do something nice for someone.